Can I ask what you're up to today? I spend my time putting art on the floor. I'm trying to change the world. What are you trying to change about the world? At the moment, our actions feeding the economy seem to be taking us towards poisoning the air, poisoning the land, poisoning the sea. It's profitable to manufacture guns and bombs. So we are, as a race, quite literally realising hell on earth through our actions. And I'm trying to say that actually a different skill set and a different tool set and a different direction of travel might be worthwhile if we want something like um, a future. What sort of alternative uh, society and culture do, oh, do you, do one you that, imagine? One that doesn't make guns and bombs, one that's not at war with itself constantly, one that doesn't poison the air, doesn't poison the land, doesn't poison the sea, one that has enough respect for each other and the planet we live on and all the other life forms that share this planet that we live on, one that has enough respect for all of that to live in a way that's completely sustainable, that is beneficial to all of life, so that mankind becomes a, a symbiotic life form that's supporting the life of its host planet instead of being a parasitic life form that's devoiding its host planet of its ability to support life. I was uh, working a little bit in Covent Garden, but it's like it's it's windy. But like it's like it's. it's I know maybe. <laughs> I know maybe that would help me, but it, it's like just this cold wind chill. It's calmer here. It's nice actually. Shalom, 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 So, what's the main way in which do you think people could? bring about this change or start to bring about this change in their habits? Just simple things like looking down, seeing a ball, looking up, seeing a bubble and not seeing the artificial boundaries that man has put on this planet. That would be a good start because I don't live, I'm not English, I speak a language called England, English but that's it, I speak a language. That language doesn't make me. I live on a ball in a bubble. I don't recognize nation, nation state. I want to live in a world where everybody I see is a friend. So money has no value between friends. We help each other for the love of it. Nothing more, nothing less. I need to be looking after the whole planet. So I've got to find a way of making friends right round the whole planet, not just on this little bit of it. Because if this little bit changes and the rest of the planet carries on going to hell, then this little bit gets dragged along with it. So maybe it's changing the way that we perceive the world that we live in. We're campaigning for Brexit. We want to be an independent, self-governing, free nation. The Parliament, they are 75% to remain and therefore um, they just view us as stupid, ignorant, xenophobic, racist, bigots, Nazi, everything you can imagine we've been called. We fought and died in two world wars for this nation to be a self-governing, independent nation and for other nations. We spit at people, well, we have been spat at in the street for wanting the same things that the people that fought and died in two world wars want. Freedom, independence, self-governing nation. As long as we've got nations, then we've got, it's, it's a club to, to belong to. We all like a sense of belonging. So the British people love the idea of belonging to a club called Britain. Well, that club is a fear-based club and that fear-based club needs to protect itself from its potential enemies. Well, its potential enemies is everybody we've shat on for the last thousand years 
because we've shat on so many people. Pardon the expression, but this is this is Britain, the Empire. You know, you know the British Empire rules the world because we poisoned and polluted and. Our heroes, people like Churchill, gassed thousands of Kurds when he was in North Africa. And yet Hitler gasses a bunch of people and he's a villain. Churchill gasses a bunch of people and he's a hero. And I left in this situation where I go, hang on a moment. Somewhere along the lines, the British history is horrible. But then when I look around the world, I see that American history is horrible and German history is horrible. And in fact, every nation has at some point messed up big time with a different nation. And as such, we're in a constant state of war or fear that allows us to generate more guns and bombs to protect ourselves, which unfortunately generates more war. So, I think we've got to break out of the fear-based culture and start having a love-based culture. I mean, I started in 2000. It evolved a little bit because I started off doing this red man, uh, like an English gent, Edinburgh Festival, like about 1996, something like that. Yeah. And when I moved to Barcelona, I took that with me, and then it evolved into. Eventually, a red, windy man. Because I was scared to take the makeup off, you know. I was all like with face paint, and then one day I was like, well, yeah, "Maybe I don't need any face paint." So I went out and did it without, and, uh, and it's been okay since. I am running around doing meetings, um, going to buy some fabric. Ah, okay. Well, what are the meetings about? Business, business, and business. I started my own company called Iboni, I G B O N Y, and yeah, I've been seeing graphic designers, seeing just people, people to get things moving. Can you tell me a little bit about what uh, what this business is? So um, it's bespoke, made to measure ladies' gowns, occasion wear. When you want to look and feel regal and gorgeous and beautiful, you wear an Iboni gown. I realised. A long time ago that my body is not the same as what the high street stores say my size is it's and everybody's body is irregular so I decided to make my own clothes and because I felt so good making them for myself I thought everyone should feel the way I feel when I'm wearing my clothes so that's how it got started my personal belief is that if in the next three years we haven't turned it around, stopped manufacturing guns and bombs, stopped using fossil fuels as a race all over the world, you know, if we haven't stopped flying in fossil fueled aeroplanes, if we haven't stopped driving fossil fuel vehicles, if we haven't done all of that and we carry on producing guns and bombs, then at the end of three years from now there will be no point to any of it. Because if you haven't got a future None of it makes any sense. I feel that the kids that are stabbing each other up will just get more and more of it because they haven't got a future. The realisation of hell on earth is the point where we end up with total war, with the destruction of our natural environment to such a degree that this planet won't be able to continue supporting life. We need to be looking after the planet. The planet can't pay us to look after it. If the only thing that drives us is money, how can I profit on this? then we're not going to look after the planet. Mm. We're going to carry on making our financial profit. We're going to carry on poisoning the planet. Then we've got no future. Mm. I'm going to keep trying for the next three years to do the best I can. And if before that three years is up, we start to choose to go in a better direction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. No, I'm, I'm trying to get people to imagine a world that doesn't use money. Okay. okay. It's, it's a bit of a weird one, but... Okay. Thank you. But thank you very much for the offer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask on a personal level, what makes you happy? At the moment. At the moment. Yeah, what makes you happy? (sighs) 
I can't answer that. Because at the moment, I'm sat on a train going to Auschwitz, and I know that there's gas ovens at the end of the line. And I can't think of anything that makes me happy on this journey. No, it's nothing to celebrate. There's nothing to rejoice about. What would make me happy is the idea of having a future. I'm watching it getting taken away more and more every single day. All I've ever wanted to do is um, express myself through something like creative since I was really young. And I kind of do that. So it's not just this, I do film work and I also act and sing and so like and I'm able to make a living from all those things kind of like bit by bit I guess yeah works work is fantastic expressing myself is fine and, and just relationships is a nightmare <laughs> of course I mean can you imagine <laughs> choosing the right person for for me basically <laughs> that's the biggest obstacle it's some pretty crap decisions. <laughs> Is there one event in your life in the past that brought you the most happiness? <sighs> I like the feeling of being in love. Yeah. And the feeling of being in love is probably one of those joyous occasions. And through my experience of it, every single bit of it has been total, absolute bullshit. And even though I was having this wonderful feeling of being in love, I was actually not... Uh, maybe not being in love with the right people, maybe... My expectations of love were were not met. Me, I don't know. It, it, for me, it's all been misguided. I've, I've fallen in love with somebody that I thought was somebody that turned out to be somebody else. If you could go back to your 16-year-old self and give him one piece of advice, what would that be? Jump now. <laughs> no. Um, I'd probably say to my 16-year-old self, you can either follow the path that you're already on and you will find that there is a lot of heartache, a lot of upset and a lot of pain. Or you can take your mother's advice and you can work really, really hard, get yourself a mortgage, get yourself a house, work really, really hard to pay your mortgage, get yourself a wife, have children, work really, really hard to keep your house and your mortgage, and your wife, and your children. Keep them in clothes, keep them fed. Work really, really hard for all of the time that there is. And never, ever give yourself time to think. Because if you never have time to think, the chances are you'll be happy. But the moment you start thinking, you've got problems.